children. Today I plan to do a little work with you on a poem so you can see how I go about it. We're going to work on the poem called The Spider and the Fly by Mary Howitt. It's a classic poem and it's one of my favorites. So there are two characters in the poem. One is a spider and the other is a fly. Now I think I want the spider to be male and I want the fly to be female. Merely because the story goes like this. The spider tries to trick the fly into coming into his parlor so he can eat her up. And the fly is wise and she's wary because she's heard that the spider eats people up and that people don't return from his lair. But he finally uses flattery and the flattery gets her. She gets flattered and she gets eaten. Yeah. So I want to make her a woman who can get flattered. And I want to make him a cunning man, if that's all right with all of you. All right, so I can make the spider sound in many different ways. Maybe I would like to give him an accent. Uh, maybe I would like him to have a high-pitched voice or a deep voice or a nasal voice. I've got to figure out what I want him to sound like. So let's try some different voices, all right? Okay, so I can make him Italian because, you know, they know how to schmooze the people. So I can say, will you, oh, that's Russian, sorry. Will you walk into my parlor? Said the spider to the fly. I can do that. Or I can do, will you walk into my parlor? Or I can do, will you walk into my parlor? Or I can do, will you walk into my parlor? I can choose whichever one I want. Um, so let's go with, hey babe, will you walk into my parlor? Said the spider to the fly. Tis the prettiest little parlor that ever you did spy. Now, I don't know if I like that. I'm not, I can't do American accents very well. All right, so let's just do Mamma mia, will you walk into my parlor? Said the spider to the fly. Tis the prettiest little parlor that ever you did spy. The way into my parlor is up a winding stair. And I have many pretty, pretty things to show you when you are there. Oh, no, no, no said the little fly. To ask me is in vain. For who goes up your winding stair can ne'er come down again. Oh, I'm sure you must be weary, dear, from soaring up so high. Will you rest upon my little bed? said the spider to the fly. There are pretty curtains drawn about. The sheets are fine and thin. And if you would like to rest a while, I'll snugly tuck you in. Oh, no, no, said the little fly. For I've often heard it said, they never, never wake again who sleep upon your bed, said the cunning spider to the fly. Dear friend, what shall I do to prove the warm affection that I've always felt for you? I have within my pantry good store of all that's nice. I'm sure you're very welcome. Will you please to take a slice? Oh, no, no, said the little fly. Kind, sir. That cannot be. I've heard what's in your pantry, and I do not wish to see. Sweet creature, said the spider, you're witty. 
and your wise. How beautiful are your gauzy wings. How brilliant are your eyes. I have a little looking glass upon my parlor shelf. If you step in one moment, dear, you shall behold yourself. I thank you, gentle sir, she said, for what you're pleased to say. And bidding you good morning now, I'll call another day. The spider turned him round about and went into his den. So he wove a subtle web. Oh, sorry, for well he knew that silly fly would soon be back again. So he wove a subtle web in a little corner sly and set his table ready to dine upon the fly. Then he came out to his door again and merrily did sing. Come hither, hither, pretty fly, with a pearl and silver wings. Your robes are green and purple. There's a crest upon your head. Your eyes are like the diamond bright, but mine a dull as lead. Alas, alas, how very soon that silly little fly, hearing his wily flattering words, came slowly flitting by. With buzzing wings she hung aloft, then near and nearer drew, thinking only of her brilliant eyes and green and purple hue, thinking only of her crested head. Poor foolish thing! At last, up jumped the cunning spider and fiercely held her fast. He dragged her up his winding stair into his dismal den within his little parlour. But she ne'er came out again. And now, dear children, who may this story read, to idle, silly, flattering words, I pray you ne'er give heed unto an evil counsellor. Close heart and ear and eye and take a lesson from this tale of the spider and the fly. Thank you. I hope you like that. There's a good moral at the end there. Flattery will get you in real trouble being flattered and allowing it to touch you. So thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this telling, do subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thank you very much.